most fabricate still out for just shot of something I still have solution Receiving end of sirens. Yeah. Is is or was is the question. A band. We got on really well as people, and uh, it just kind of clicked. And even though it was a little rough around the edges at first, we knew that there, you know, was something there, and that we all had similar goals in mind. That we all really wanted to play music and not do anything else. The trio is basically six best friends that. Um, wanted to create and share something uh, just extremely personal and change the way people thought about music and um, I think life in general. We wanted to make good music, we wanted to make different music, and we wanted to, you know, almost make people trip without taking drugs, you know, we wanted, it was very, like I said, it was very heady music. Happy, passionate people coming together, creating a piece of art. And the rest is history. It all started Alex Bars and myself. We were in a band for a long time in high school. We went up to Northeastern University in Boston together. Alex was at the cafeteria where he ran into Andrew, who was wearing a used t shirt, who was one of our favorite bands at that time. I said, Brennan, I'm. I met this guy, he could be a drummer, you know, he seems like he's pretty legit, he's got tattoos and all sorts of other stuff. He's like, we live together, we're trying to start a new band, what do you play? And I said, I play drums. So he said, oh cool, well we're auditioning drummers and, you know, maybe we can get together over Christmas break and jam. Nate was a good friend of mine from high school, so I gave him a call and I knew he could shred. Um, asked him to play guitar in the band and that's how it sort of started. And. Um, it was really just for fun. I don't know, it was just an immediate connection because Andrew puts all this vibe that to anyone he meets. And it's just like, he loves people. He loves, love just, you know, the whole idea of human interaction and like figuring out people's personalities and stuff like that. So we had immediate connection. Well, the first song Brendan and I had started to come up with, I think, was Vertigo and Consciousness. Um, that song, yeah, I think it was just wrote on acoustics, and that was the first song I, I showed Andrew. Alex and Brendan had already had like the bulk of the song Vertigo Unconsciousness written before we kind of became a band. But I remember distinctly one of the first things we wrote being shirt sleeves and Nate writing the riff that that thing. We put up Singer Wanted signs everywhere and the list of bands we liked and what we were looking for and Andrew and I were working at Urban so we were handing them out there, we were, you know, stapling to telephone poles around Boston, putting up ads on the internet. Ben Patrikas uh, came about in an interesting way. We found Ben through mp3.com. We were looking online, we heard this band called The Drive and somehow we had heard that he left the band or something. Uh, we jammed with him at his house in Braintree on Academy Street. You know, we all knew right when we started playing together, like after the first practice, I'm pretty sure Ben was like, all right, this is what I want to do, you know? <laughs> Ben's dynamic, which is unbelievable, like just came and, and, and gave us this like crazy rush. And as far as playing shows, people people were talking about it and and his I don't know man, Ben Ben is such an awesome person. <laughs> This 
story is like this three song demo got them a deal through Atlantic Records and we were all like freaking out this was like an amazing thing we were so I'm like great these guys are gonna be on Atlantic Records like I know the budget of the record so I moved home to DC and I spent my whole savings like opening a studio in DC and I'm living at my mom's house at age 27 which for me was like terrible feeling um, great house but like but just like to be 27 and living at home but I literally spent every cent that I had like opening a studio down there on the assumption that we were doing a record that winter when Ben quit you know it was a devastating for us at the time because that was all we had known as a band it was like this is our band Ben is our singer without Ben we have no band you know that's really how it was and you know we had a good deal on the table that we you know were all pretty excited about and it was pretty scary for him and he just didn't want to go down that road and uh you know there was a big part of me that felt like well that's over you know at least uh you know at least I'm still in school you know and I remember we went over to Emerson, and uh, I think everyone in there was just was just kind of uh, really emotional. Everyone had tears, you know, building up because everyone knew it was coming. And here was this record contract just about to dissipate, and nothing we could do about it because our lead singer, you know, couldn't commit. And I just remember being in D.C. and being like, "Fucked, like totally fucked. Like I've got no money, I've got no income. I just I'm in debt because I opened the studio." At least. I can speak for myself, it was like a all-time low at that point because I had four of the bands dropped out of Northeastern University, which was a good school. I had quit my job, basically, to make sure this band would happen. I would lost a girlfriend over the whole thing because I didn't have a school and I didn't have a job anymore and I'd given everything and then find out I don't even have this band anymore, really. You know, I gave up everything for something that doesn't even exist anymore. So for all of us, it was sort of a tough time. Um, so that was the end of version one. It was Atlantic Records and Ben leaving the band and all of us sort of being, the feeling of being suspended in time. Get into the camera. Hello and welcome to Movie Phone. Hi again. You recording? Yep. Cool. Go, you gotta see, where are we? I don't know. I don't know where we are. Casey. Well, we met Casey in kind of a funny way. A lot of people know this now, but he was a co-worker of mine and Brendan's at Urban Outfitters in Boston. He had moved out from California, and I'm sure he'll tell you this himself, to chase a girl, essentially. Um, he had nowhere to live when he came out here. He was living with like three girls um, in Mission Hill, I think, and working at Urban, and, you know, broke as a joke, and one of the girls that he was living with was one of the managers in the store and she knew that we had a band and that we were looking for someone she's like you should check out my roommate stuff like you know i think i'm gonna get him a job here and he started and we talked a little bit and he said let me give you some demos and i listened to him and played him for the guys we we're like this guy's amazing you know like we don't know if he's like the lead singer we're looking for because we were still stuck in the mode of like we need a front man we need an adam lazara we need a burt mccracken and casey obviously didn't fit either of those bills, but he's a mastermind, you know, he's much more than that. And, you know, luckily we saw that at the time. I uh, obviously didn't think that anyone would want me to be like a front man and I never wanted to be a front man of a band. Um, but I talked to um, Andrew first and he told me what his band was and he said that they had played for a few months and lost their singer. Then I sent him my stuff and uh, they really liked all of the sequencing and all the electronics and the guitar work. 